the meeting three times. So it, no, and I, I was, was so pressed for time. Yeah, yeah it's it's okay. but thanks for saying that. Yeah. Yeah. The the excellent. Thank <laughs> they you. got to flying school time. Yeah, I know. Let's put a few more signs in the middle of the way. Yeah, it's terrible. So now they have the historic We're recording. ones and the Hollywood. And the Hollywood. Okay, if council members will take their seat, we'll get started. Yes. <clears throat> I'd like to call this uh, City Council study session to order. Um, we will be discussing um, District 1 vacancy, um, more so the process of, of how we're going to move forward with this. And uh, once we get that done, then we might be able to do some uh, preliminary things. I have uh, asked um, the City Attorney to to make certain that we do not violate open meetings laws um, with the direction we're going. So um, anyway, uh, with that, we will get started. Um, does anybody have things that they would like to talk about that we ought to consider in the process? Council Member Wink. Um, I think that uh, I think we did a great job last week and in terms of delineating what how we were going to approach this tonight and um, I do think it's a good idea if we come to the table with and present our top two um, I think by seeing what top two we all have for the candidates um, based on everything we discussed last week enables us to then Understand whether or not a, a, a special election is at bay, or if if we can indeed come to a, a, some decision on the candidate for District One. And I'm hoping that perhaps if we present our top two, and maybe if we don't all have the same number one and same number two, at least there might be a number, a person that that exists throughout all six of our finalist lists that maybe we can look at and, and consider. So I, I think we did a really good job last week. I, I don't have anything <clears> else to add. All right. I absolutely do think we did a really good job. We had a great group of candidates. And um, so I, I appreciate um, the solemnity that this council is taking towards this. So uh, um, Council Member Olson. Or were you yes, through? Chairman. Final note, I, uh, you know, I, I did receive quite a plethora of responses from District 1 residents um, in favor of special, of candidates. And, um, but we did include that in our discussion last week. I want to at yes. least raise it tonight, but we did include that. And so that is part of what I think we did well and, and what I expect to be part of our process moving forward tonight. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I, th I think that's a, a Councilmember Wink's idea. Is, it seems like a good one. I would like to broaden it beyond two so that we can maybe get a pool that at least we'll find a couple of ways that we can then go at figuring out compromises. Because I have probably <coughs> three to four that you know I could live with and think that these would be great. They'd be different in different ways. Uh, I'm sure you know I have preferences for a couple more than others, but. Um, I'd like to find a way to to broaden it. Well, I don't. I I would. Yeah, just a little bit maybe. But maybe that's where we. If we do two each, then we can get on and then figure it out. But if if that works, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, let's hear from uh, the other council members because um, someone might um, <clears throat> have another idea. Council member. Uh, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, I just the way that my scoring worked out. I had three at the top. Uh, myself, so just I guess on that note, three's a, I can definitely whittle it down to two, but uh, three would winds up with my scoring a bit better. Uh, I do have more of a procedural question as well. Once a selection is made, if a selection is made by this body, they would be sworn in at the next council meeting. What is the timing, I guess, of the actual okay. them taking a Does seat with council? Wow, well, you're kind of jumping the gun. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, banking that we're going to reach a, a, a decision here. Uh, I think there's a lot of things that hinge well, on this too. So I, I am curious. If, if the, let's say, for example, that the decision was made tonight, there would be a motion to uh, approve somebody. We would bring the actual appointment paperwork back to the next meeting, and the person would be appointed and sworn in then, at the next regular meeting. 
uh, early February. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Council Member Berentine. I, I agree, we can go ahead and try and see. I'm not sure how the process looks about whittling. I, I don't intend to whittle my list, <laughs> but I have, I have three, but I actually have four because I have kind of a tie in my mind from my third, depending on what else happens. Mm -hmm. So actually I do have four. Um, and so I would agree with uh, Council Member Olson that uh, I don't want it um, to, um, I'd like to keep it a little bit uh, larger group and see kind of where we're at. Okay. Council Member Martinez, do you have? Sure, yeah, I, I think the process has gone well so far. I liked the open interviews and the, the meet and greet and the, the fact that we were allowing, um, asking for community feedback. I liked that a lot. Um, I also, we, I think that they were all great candidates. They all have something to offer. Um, I have a top two. I would be okay with, um, if we need to broaden it a little bit to a top three, we, we could do that. Um. Okay. All right, and and I I have um, a top three. I mean, I, I probably have two that are maybe a little bit higher, um, <clears throat> but I also have three, and so I think that might be a good starting place. Um, are there any other things that we need to consider um, before we move into that? She's got hers up. So she, do you, do you have something or? <laughs> <laughs> Council member Wink. I am okay with three as well. I have three, I thought. I had a feeling based on the synergy in the room, we might all have two that might work, but three's fine. I'm absolutely fine with three. And I don't think there's anything else I have to add. I guess I didn't understand what you said. So initially when I spoke, I said, you know, if we present our top two, blah, 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 and then everybody else talks about three candidates. So I'm absolutely fine presenting three. I think that's a fine. Just for the clarification. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, and, and um, so if we share our top three, um, <clears throat> the attorney, would you talk to us a little bit about that so we don't move into um, any kind of violation? Right. So under uh, Open Meetings Act, the discussion has to be open. So there's the only, the only place by charter that you're allowed to do any kind of information by, pri by secret ballot is when you vote for the mayor. So you can each announce your top three in no particular order. Um, and someone can keep a list of those and, and begin to chart where there's consensus or lack thereof. As long as the scope of this meeting remains just in discussing the different uh, different candidates and uh, there's no actual decision made, you're fine. The idea that you would take uh, two top candidates at a minimum into the regular meeting and then have the final discussion in the regular meeting is uh, probably procedurally preferable, but as long as the decision is not made in this meeting, you're uh, going to be in compliance with open meetings. Yeah. Council um, Member Burns. I, regardless of this, what we're deciding right here, the fact that we're whittling it down, and you said then, why do I say whittle now all the time? Because you say that. <laughs> and um, does that mean we made a decision in here? As long as the formal decision is made in the regular meeting, it's legally acceptable. But again, if you want my procedural advice, I think it's best to, to go into the regular session with at least two final candidates to discuss at that point so that that final stage of actual deliberation is made in the regular meeting. No, I understand that that's kind of procedurally preferred, but I'm not sure that that um, meets the requirements for the open meeting. It, it, we're making a decision in here. 
And that is, I want to make sure that what we're doing is following the law first, regardless of whether it's picking this candidate or, or, or picking which lights we're going to choose on Broadway. Um, I, I don't want it to appear that we're following the law. I want us to follow the law because I'm more interested in making sure that we're consistent and in line with what the law is because it's transparency and openness for the public. Yes. Yes to everything you've just said. So there's no strict rule that's, that I can cite back to you on other than the decision, the actual decision can't be made in this meeting. It has to be made in, uh, in the regular meeting. That's, that's the, the black letter law. But everything you've just said is also true. If you were to take it down to a single candidate in a study session, while you would have complied with the law, there's certainly the appearance that the decision was not made in the regular meeting. So uh, it's absolutely appropriate for you as a body to decide that you're going to reach consensus on two to three names to take into the regular meeting. But the other thing is when you're in the regular meeting, you are all still able to bring up any name that that is presented for you tonight. So as long as nobody feels like they're not allowed to go back and revisit anything in the regular meeting, that the, the decision is actually made there. But you're not making any type of decision in executive session, and this meeting is being streamed. Okay, then I would disagree since with what you've advised us to do only in that we all just said that we would go ahead and come up with the top three, and I would expect that that's what we'll go into the, the chamber with, was at least the top three that we... That we I, I have concern on, I mean, reaching consensus is still reaching a decision, and I want to make sure that we do this uh, correctly. I don't mind having the everybody saying this is my top three choices or my top three or four choices, whatever, and then we can go in, and if we can kind of see that there might be some opportunity for um, meeting other minds, then we can do that. But. Can I ask a question then? Because um, it is very possible that as we start sharing, we won't all have the same three. And so logistically, all seven names could still be on our list. And to we would still be making a decision based on that. I mean, how is that different? I mean, if we all... If all six of us have the same three names, wow. Well, then I guess we'll have an interesting <laughs> conversation in there <laughs> and we could end this meeting earlier. <laughs> well, that's true. So, I mean, our... But only in that the, uh, the attorney advised us to come down to two names and go in there, and I do not agree with doing that. Okay, so three names, and that was okay too, correct? No, I said, to be clear, I said... I would procedurally prefer you not to take less than two names in. Oh, okay. Oh, less not, than. Not less than two names, okay. I would have made my conversation shorter. Less than. <laughs> I okay. you said two names. I, I apologize. That was my concern. Then that's been cleared up. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I understood, too, was it was at least no, no less than two. So we could have more, but let's talk a little bit about that. How are, so are we all going to give our three, and then all those end up in the in the hopper as the possible ones? Can't we get it to three with consensus and, and with the idea that you know maybe four of us like those three and two don't, that when we come back in there that you know you can always bring them up again. And right, and you could bring sure anybody is. else right. up again also. But it, to help us get going on this, we get started here. We do this all the time. We're always bringing right. stuff in on consensus and we have a conversation there that we don't agree with, you know, right. whether it's the budget or whatever. Right, right, okay. Well, the problem is, Ben, is that we've, we have gotten kind of too much in the habit of reaching consensus here and then not having any discussion back in there. And so I would um, disagree with us making decisions where we, where we pare it down. If we can come, I think the understanding was that if we kind of came and were able to say who, who the tops were and then maybe if we had too wide a spread, we were going to make a decision on whether we were going to go ahead and move this 
to another conversation on a special meeting or something where may, I may, maybe we could <coughs> vote in a special meeting or do something other than a study session, but a study session, we can't do that. So if we can get some idea that we all have some kind of group that looks similar, then I don't think we need to to do that. If it's over three, if it's if it's more than three people, then I think that we need to probably maybe do what we said last time and spend have another special meeting or do something where we would be able to vote. Well, I don't know why we spent why we set aside two hours then. I mean, we, right, I, right. So we could come here at at six thirty and figure it out and then brought it all in there. So it doesn't make any sense. I thought we were going to spend two hours hashing out as far as we could to come to some sort of consensus. I'm not sure, Mr. Cuesta, if you're thinking about this as well like that or not, um, but it seems to me like that's what we set aside two hours for. I don't, I, and I beg to differ on, I think we talk about a lot of things while we're in there. We go till one in the morning talking about things. Right, so. and, I, and I do believe that we have um, talked about things in there more <laughs> than. Well, um, maybe, that's true. Right. Can I ask the attorney, is it, if we start going, like discussing people and then not, and then X and them out of it, is that going to violate any of the voting? Not technically, but again, I'm more comfortable if you can, you're, you can reach a consensus. Again, I, I prefer no less than two names. But when you go back into regular meeting, uh, to at least mention everybody's name once, that whoever they are, so that everybody understands that they were part of the decision-making process. Nobody's confused that you're starting your discussion off in this study session. You've posted it. You've been very, very open about your process. So the people who are interested in how you're thinking about it have this opportunity to watch. And I think because you have been so incredibly transparent about this, in this entire process that the only thing that you have to worry about is was a decision made in the regular meeting. The rest of what, you, what you're discussing is mostly to make sure that the public can, continues to see how transparent and open you've been in this process. So there are things you can do uh, in the regular meeting. For example, mention everybody's name once, and I think that you will because everybody wants to be thanked for participating in this process. And uh, but if you if you just acknowledge we've completed two, a two-hour study session, we've reached a consensus on three finalists. If you'd like to see how we came to that, you can go back and review that online. But we're going to pick up the conversation from this point. I think you're absolutely within the open meetings requirements. Right, thank you. Okay, with that, <laughs> and I, I would just suggest that when we share our names, share them in no particular order. Um, so <clears throat> then that way we can go from there. Would uh, someone like to start? I have a question. When we share our names, are we just sharing the names and going around and then going to go back around and say why we chose that? Or should we say that at the same time we say our choices? Well, I mean, for time's sake, I, I would suggest we just do the names because if mm -hmm. we're too far spread yeah, apart, we? we have a whole different conversation that we're going to do. Right, and, and the truth is um, probably consensus may come and then um, that could be shared, you know, from the dais too, why you appreciate it. Um, so let's just, let's start out and see where it goes. Okay. So. I'll, I'll start. Okay. I'll give them in last name alphabetical order. Okay. <laughs> and first of <laughs> all, <laughs> you don't mind, you said not to any order. Oh gosh, where's the other one? So. I, uh, I really want to say what everybody's already said too, is that we have some great candidates here who care about the city, um, and so I'm very thankful. So I had Scott Danford, uh, Carson Green, and Antonio Sierra. Okay. Someone like to go next? I'm happy to jump in. Uh, continuing with the alphabetical order, I had <laughs> Mr. Carson Green, 
uh, Miss, Mrs. Andrea Mannion, and Mr. Sierra. Someone like to be next? I'll go back. Uh, in random order, I... <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was sitting there trying yeah. to go, oh, wait, how's the alpha A, B, C? Yeah, just random. Just random. Um, I had Othoniel Sierra, Scott Danford, and Carson Green. Carson Green and who else? Othoniel Sierra and Scott Danford. <clears throat> who would like to go next? Was Carson <coughs> Green? Uh, Sierra and Emily. Danford. Okay. <coughs> Council Member Barentine, would you like to go next? I had um, Andrea Mannion, Carson Green, Scott Danford, and Antonio uh, uh, <laughs> Sierra in no particular order. But I wasn't going to try and figure out alphabetical. Uh, Councilmember Barentine, uh, Mannion, Green, Sierra, and Danford. Yes. Thank you. Councilmember Wink. <clears throat> In alphabetical order, <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, Scott Danford, um, <clears throat> Carson Green, and Othonio Sierra. Okay, <clears throat> I believe this is an alphabetical order. I have Carson Green, Scott Danford, Andrea Mannion, and Othaniel Sierra. We have four. So we already a have. discussion we can have in council, so <laughs> I would assume we can come to a decision from that. Yeah. We have four individuals with different amounts of scores, each with un discrete score amounts from all of us. So. Mm -hmm. and, oh, oh. I'm not quite sure what is meant by score amounts from us. Uh, in terms of how how many of us said, oh, so we oh. said Lorette five times, we said Dave four times. So each individual of the four we named uh -huh. have different amounts of votes from all of us. Um, so we have the same four people, and each have different score amounts. So I think that's a good place oh, to right. move forward. But having said that, some people would have voted four times. Right. And some three. Mm -hmm. It even doesn't but matter. There's the still a. There's still a. Still, there's still there's, four. It's and true. Everybody has discrete score amounts. Sure. And there, so. and so that eliminates the need for us to have a, an additional meeting. I feel comfortable that we yep. can come to a conclusion tonight. I do too. I mean, that doesn't guarantee we can. Nothing guarantees we can. But I mean, I think with four, I, we had some amazing candidates. And so mm -hmm. yep. it was very difficult for me to even do the ones I did. So, Okay. Councilmember Wilson. It looks to me as if everyone had two that were the same. But you don't know the, but you don't know the order. order. No, you I don't know. Have so know the ranking out of order. Our, out of our things, we each, mm. we each had two that we all agree on mm -hmm. in our groups. Which are? We're not, and that's well, exactly you, what I didn't want to. You can add it up right now. <laughs> I did. Well, I mean, I'm clear. It's good to know that we have two that we all do agree on actually to be in the three. top three to four so you're suggesting <coughs> council member Barentine, that we take these four names 
into the city council meeting um, and discuss these four names on the dais? No, no. ma'am. Okay. I am not. Okay. I am suggesting that we take all seven names, but we have come to an understanding that there are probably four people that are that are um, more uh, that are at the consideration for everybody, and that more than likely we will be able to come to a decision tonight. Okay. Do our are we open to any more discussion about strengths of each individual, or are we in? I'll be more than happy to share the conversation in the dais. Okay, that's what <laughs> I'm asking. I'm un then I'm uncomfortable <coughs> doing that because then I think the intent of that is to pare down that list, as Councilmember Olson kind of alluded already. You know, this kind of idea that well we actually only have two and, and and I don't see it that way I do think that I'm comfortable that we can come to a decision I just would like to have that conversation on the dais where we can vote we probably should have had this discussion the other mm -hmm. night because we could have met yeah. uh, or we could have had more things on the, agenda. on the agenda yeah and it wasn't until we got some additional information from the city attorney that I realized um, I really liked the way that we did it for um, uh, Greg, who was the uh, mayor then? Um, the attorney for um, with uh, Sports Authority. Oh, Doug Garrett. Doug Garrett, yeah. So he was mayor at the time when um, the uh, opening came up for, and I believe that was at large. Yeah, it was at large. And then, so I go, oh, I like the way we did that. That worked out good. And then I realized we did it totally illegally. We did it in an executive session. We did it behind closed doors. But it was the way that he handled it, even for just the group. And then I realized, oh, my gosh, we can't do it that way. So it was kind of um, realizing that as time passes, we get wiser and smarter and do things better. And The only thing, now, and since we're here, I mean, is this they're really point of oh, order. Um, are right. we going to actually just allow people to just talk wherever they want from now on or are we going to use these that's all i want to know because okay let's I let's use the mayor, um, the mayor pro tem asked, asked, i just want to know um, the mayor pro tem asked me a question I, that i answered linda has the floor i just want to know because mm -hmm. that conversation actually initiated differently too so i just want to know right um yes please um use your then um not. Okay. use them okay council member olson no, continue answering her question. No, um, she asked me a question. I answered. That's right. I did, and I and take responsibility. Please, let please. I didn't Thank mean you. any disrespect <clears throat> that I answered her question. Thank you. <laughs> so I don't mean to cause tension. <laughs> okay. I think so. Well, I kinda all right. I have the floor. It's, yes, it's, please stop. So I, I will just make a comment, but that's the kind of thing that goes back and forth that make, makes this difficult. So if we're going to do it, let's do it. If we're not going to do it, then let's not. But So I thought we made this decision last week that we would spend two hours really thinking this through. And there is nothing that precludes us from not going in there and not continuing if there's somebody you still really feel like we need to get on a list. Um, I would like to begin the process. We have two hours we set aside. I, I'd like to respect everybody's time, especially citizens who came two hours earlier than the regular meeting for this conversation. So I would, I would like to see us at least begin to talk about it, whether it's here or there, it's public. We are not making a decision until we're in there. That's very clear. We do consensus building in here all the time. I see no reason why we can't at least begin that process and use our time well. All right, I appreciate that, uh, Councilmember Olson. Other thoughts? Councilmember Martinez. I agree. I thought we that's why we set aside this two hours, so we could kind of deliberate over the candidates and their strengths. Um, so I would like to go forward with that. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Cuesta. I'm more than happy to do the same. Um, having said that, I want to be incredibly uh, cautious on not even getting near um, violating the Open Meetings Act. We have been very, very good up to this point. I think incredibly transparent, mm -hmm. above reproach. And so I would hate to make it this far, then we, we go a little too far. I, I'm Even when I get skittish about that, um, it, it makes me a little nervous. I'm happy to wait the hour and a half. I'm with you, not the best use of time, for sure. Um, but if, you're, if you think we can proceed without um, crossing any boundaries on the Open Meetings Act, I, I'm happy to do so. As I understood 
going forward is that the purpose of this next hour and a half was for each one of you to talk about the different characteristics and things that you were looking for for this person and how different people may have met those characteristics or standards for you. It is not to decide. Uh, the, the decision has to be made uh, in the regular meeting, but a workshop meeting, it is fine to have discussions. It's, they're set up under state statute, and as long as this is just a discussion, that's absolutely fine. However, I want you to know I am monitoring pretty closely, and if at any point I'm uncomfortable with the direction, uh, the mayor pro tem and I visited early earlier, and I told her I'd start waving my <laughs> my block. So if you're in the middle of speaking and she's waving her stick, <laughs> probably she should Watch stop it. for uh, so she doesn't throw it at you. <laughs> um, okay, um, Councilmember Wink, did you want to weigh in on the process? about going ahead. Um. <clears throat> I um, Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. I, I too am okay discussing <clears throat> um, the, the, these, the candidates in terms of the, um, the criteria which we expected, which we are looking for in a candidate from District 1 to serve the next two years. Now, as, as long as we're not making a decision, I think we have the time as Council Member Olson said, we have citizens here. We are here. We have that time set aside. So um, I've been going over and over in my head why we wouldn't do that right now, and I, I don't see any reason why not. So okay. I'm okay with that. All right. And so since we have consensus to move forward um, with a discussion, um, we will go ahead and someone um, – if they want to be the first, that will be fine, but I want everybody to be cognizant that the city attorney is here to, to help us out. So um, with that, we'll get started. I would like to get some more specific parameters. What are we discussing right now? What Are we just describing the attributes we liked about the three candidates we selected but still not putting them in a particular order? Or are we saying at this point, I liked these three in this order or four? Okay, and now I like those questions. I want feedback on that because those are the things that I thought we probably ought to talk about before we ever got to naming the names. Um, Council no, I, I, th I think that's a great question, and I think that's where we can help ourselves by saying what were some of the best attributes of each that made the person go on the list for us? What was the most compelling? And that, I think if we could do that out of the six areas that we picked, seventh being that other question, I think that would be useful. That can take some time. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yep. Any other thoughts on that? <clears throat> Council Member Baron time. Is it limited? It, it, it can't be limited to just the ones that we picked either if what we're looking for is some of the attributes on the list. We would like it. If it's going to be a discussion about the people that we want to do, then it's hardly limited to the ones that we thought were the because in the end, after this discussion, if it may be that, that people have some different expectation of what ought to be there, and there might be a chance that somebody would change their mind on the, the ranking of the original ones I said, or even somebody different on that seven. So I think it ought to be open, obviously, to all of the ones that interviewed. Okay. If um, if there's, you know, actually we can bring that up at any time in the discussion here or in on the dais. I think that is um, a good thing to do. So. And as okay. a final point of clarification, we are not ranking our three or four <coughs> at this time. Then. I no, I don't think uh, we should rank them at this time. I think we should wait for that till we get on the dais. Okay, would someone like to start us off? I'd be happy to. Okay. I wanted to, first of all, let everybody know that I did go and um, talk to um, Erica Zurichy. And I'm sorry that she did not interview, but I did go and let her know that I was very a respectful of her, her decision um, to uh, withdraw 
um, think she had some wonderful attributes. It's unfortunate that District 1 has a business owner currently representing them and that um, that opportunity to at least have that in the mix for that, you know, that type of business and the kind of public. But that was very nice. As well as I tried to contact Adam Willis. Um, those were the two people who had put themselves out there and then uh, unfortunately withdrew. And so we had seven people that, that ended up um, applying. Um, uh, one of the things that I kind of struggled with, um, uh, uh, both Dana Liebert and uh, Hillary Lenz um, have, um, I mean, some of the things that Hillary, um, Dana has been through is very near and dear to my heart with an advocacy piece of it. And I really think that they've had quite an advocacy role going on in District 1. And um, I really thought that that was a strength that, um, that, that she brought and really considered, as well as Hillary, um, with the nonprofit aspect of what she's doing and the kind of information, um, youth and energy that she was bringing to it as well. Um, with um, Mark Hessling as well, the passion to serve and the um, kind of business um, background was also really um, very impressive. Um, Andrea Mannion, I, I mean, I can't, I was extremely impressed with the uh, background, uh, background um, accounting-wise uh, for the budgets, for the extensive uh, amount of government accounting that she had and um, the job that she's done with ACE, um, it seemed a little bit, um, it, I, I don't think it's unusual for people to be on council who have already served on a board. I think the only one here at the table is you and, and you. So the majority of council has, has come off a board of commission and I think you saw some of the strengths both in Carson Green and Andrea Mannion and coming off of a board and commission, having that experience in how the city works and um, some of the connections, meeting, you know, people having the job that they have to do and um, uh, moving forward. Um, and um, the same thing with Scott Danford. While it wasn't a, a board or commission, coming off of the, um, being on the board for um, the chamber, I think, and the kind of work that they do to kind of get those consensus and understand what the city is facing. So I just, um, uh, I, I want to thank all of them because they all had, this was an extremely difficult decision to make or even to pare down kind of because there's still things that I love um, and would like to, I'm, I'm sure people would like to morph all of us into a perfect council person too because we each come with different different attributes but when we have that opportunity to talk to seven of them like this. So um, I really think that the uh, focus from all of them during their interviews about the budget and about um, making sure that we stay engaged was very important. Um, the, um, I think the strengths of the, of the uh, people that we've mentioned are just, I don't know, I, it's just, I, I, I think an overwhelming theme came out about the budget, about a lot of things that they like about where we're going and about trying to make sure that we have a cohesive kind of team council thing going on really resonated with those. Um, top four, so well with all of them, but mostly with those top four. So that's, that's kind of what I wanted to share right now. Thank you. <clears throat> Someone else. Councilmember Martinez. Sure, I'll go ahead. Um, I also want to thank Councilmember Wink again for making this um, chart for us. For me, it was really helpful um, as I went through and tried to score each. Um, so my kind of process was I filled it out that evening and then I went back and watched the interviews again and made sure my scores were, I felt appropriate. And then I went through each and made a list of, I was gonna do pros and cons, but then I just did pros, like the strengths of each one. So I'll just 
go through those. Okay. Um, so for, let's see, Dana Liebert, I had the background of advocacy would be a good perspective to have on council. Um, I think she would really dig in and research the issues and the information. Um, I also mentioned that if, if, we, if she isn't selected for this position, I think she'd be a great fit for Keep Inglewood Beautiful. Um, she had some uh, interesting ideas on reducing waste water and increasing safety. Uh, she also had some good ideas on synergy for the business community, which I liked. Um, and then for, let's see, Hillary Lentz. The pros I had for her was, um, it, it's her benefit, she's been doing research, she's been coming to several council meetings, so I think that deserves a little bit of credit. Um, she's very knowledgeable about senior issues. She had a really positive um, attitude and energy. Um, she men mentioned our mission statement, so that was, that was nice that she uh, did that. Uh, let me see what else. Othoniel Sierra. Um, I think his uh, background perspective would be good to have on council. Um, I also received uh, some citizen input on him, which was great. Uh, he also has done a lot, some work with the citizen group CASE, so I think he's already um, dedicated to the community and doing work there. Um, he also referenced specific items in the comp plan, so I like that. It shows that he had at least read it. Um, he also mentioned the importance of water rights which is very important to our city. Uh, I think he'd be really willing to listen and ask questions. Um, he also mentioned the biogas project, so it's, it's good that he's following that. Um, and I like that he mentioned impact fees, or impact fees and looking at the pros and cons of those and not just um, we should or we shouldn't do it, but looking at weighing the pros and cons. Um, he had an interesting idea about creating the food-centric marketplace, which I thought was interesting. Um, and repurposing historical buildings to create gathering places. I thought that was an interesting idea too. Um, and he seemed very aware of the impact his decisions would make on the community, so I, I like that perspective as well. Um, and I just made a note that he shook each of our hands at the end of the interview, which was, he was the only one that did that. Um, and I like that he sets individual goals each year, um, and that he talked about um, that he's not an expert on everything and bringing in the experts when it's appropriate. That's very relevant to council. We're not all the experts on anything, so we, we need to call on the experts. Um, so let's see who's next. Uh, Mark Hessling, I liked that he um, he would be really willing to learn and ask questions. He has um, a serious interest in technology, so I think that would be very beneficial for us as well. Um, and his, thank you, uh, his business um, sense and business ownership, I think, would provide um, a good perspective as well. Um, Scott Danford, the pros, positive energy, um, a wide spectrum of service to the community. I like that he has served with the, the chamber and also with Pirate Youth Sports. I think that shows his breadth of understanding of um, our diverse community needs and is willing to serve in all those areas. Um, he's optimistic. He likes to learn. Um, I like that he touched on improving social services through partnerships. I think that, that was important to me. Um, and his response to the conflict question, he said they, um, yeah, I think he provided a couple examples, but how he, he talked about um, they asked questions and then um, listened and then implemented new processes. So I think that that was helpful for, for me. Um, and he clearly understands the role of a council member. Um, let's see, Andrea Mannion. She's very detail-oriented on the budget, and I think that is great. Um, she mentioned Amazon sales tax collection, which I also like a lot. Uh, she's willing to ask a lot of questions and dig into research. Um, she also said she would run regardless of who we select for the position, so I liked her um, kind of response on that. And she's cur currently serving on ACE, so I think that um, is to her benefit as well <coughs> and would benefit uh, council. And then Carson Green... Uh, he served on the Board of Adjustment Appeals for 12 years, I think it was. That's a long-term service commitment. Um, he also mentioned our water independence, and he also mentioned the collection of online sales tax, which I think is important. Um, and he seems to understand the role and time commitment being a council member would uh, take. And he mentioned specific building codes that we could consider changing, so I think he knows a lot about um, the specific uh, codes that obviously that board has worked on. 
and seems really ready to learn about a variety of subjects. So. All right, thank you. I'll go ahead and jump in here. Okay, great. Uh, I am going to be relatively brief in order of getting to uh, specific to uh, a preference. Um, I will start again going in order of names. Mr. Green, um, I thought he had a very, very interesting background, and I appreciate the technical side of his skill set and personality um, with the software development he's done. Looking through his resume, it appears that much of that is self-taught, uh, and it looks like it appears that he's um, the president of a very successful software company now. So I really appreciate being self-taught, bringing a business from square one all the way to a success point that he's at, all the things that go along with that. Uh, he mentioned just the 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 human component of it, um, and you know the folks he's had to deal with, and then um, I think that there's also the budget component. Needless to say, with a business like that, I'm sure that dollars and cents are always on the front of his mind. I did appreciate his uh, story of conflict with his. Uh, buddy or coworker that he went out with and uh, just when, when things were high stakes uh, he made the right decision and played it safe uh, which I think is something that everybody on council uh, can probably appreciate. Um, so I, I thought he was a strong candidate. I definitely appreciate that he's done 12 years in the city. Uh, he threw his hat in the ring once before um, so he, he seems like a guy who he's He's walked the walk. He's definitely shown that he has a commitment to the city and is willing to do um, work there. Um, I thought Mr. Sierra I thought he had a very, very interesting backstory. Um, I really appreciate it. A son in Inglewood Schools, which I think goes a long way. There's certainly an investment there. Um, I really liked his stories uh, of his work. It seems like he leads several people and is constantly on the front line of um, making sure folks are satisfied. And I think that has an inter interesting component of what he does, uh, making sure that people are getting what their uh, expectations are. And uh, I certainly appreciate that as well. Um, I thought he had some interesting business ideas also. Um, I, I like the food market as well. Um, a couple of other things that he mentioned that I thought stuck out as me as being um, clever. Uh, and I think that would fit in well with where the city is going also. I thought it was um, things worth exploring. Uh, and that's actually another note. I'll stop there. There were several ideas from candidates that I won't speak to specifically here that I've made notes on. Uh, there were a lot of good ideas that came out of this mm -hmm. session regardless mm -hmm. of who ends up being selected. So really good stuff. Um, I guess one more reason why we should always be listening to uh, the neighborhood. Um, <laughs> moving along to uh, Miss Mannion, uh, you know, I, I've made no secret that I'm very budget focused, and I think she's probably a prototype candidate if, uh, if you're looking at matters of budget. Um, I really appreciate the work she's done with Ace, small business owner. Uh, her educational background lends well to it. Um, I went during when I was still running, uh, I remember coming to one council meeting, and uh, the budget discussions were still ongoing. This was probably. October, and I remember she walked up there one point during public comment, and she had the budget out, and she was going line by line, and this is just her as private citizen doing that, and I thought it, that said a lot to me, that uh, she's been heavily vested as well. Uh, certainly her roots run deep in the city uh, with her family history as well, so all three of them are strong candidates to me, um, and I will, I will wrap it up there. And, and again, I will lead off on great ideas from the group, from the seven people, there were some real good ideas that came out of it, um, so I'm grateful for that too. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. <clears throat> Who would like to go next? It's time for that side to pony up. <laughs> <laughs> you all I don't mind going next. <laughs> I, <laughs> okay, <laughs> council member. Do you want to go? Well, it's just, okay. You're not going to say anything about the other candidates, and you kept it to the three uh, that you I'll leave it to those three. Okay. Yes, thank you. Great. Council member Wayne. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I want to first echo what council member Barentine said about. Um, Part of what we're looking for, being being a, a person that's able to join the six of us and, and make for a cohesive council, I think those two words together, cohesive council, really resonated with me. So thank you for saying that because in the end, we may have skills and, and abilities, a uh, plethora of those, but, but can we form a cohesive council is also pretty important. Um, as I scored the rubric, I took into account um, these candidates may not and likely do not have a plethora of experience in terms of all of the issues. Um, uh, but given their backgrounds and different elements of experience and skills, um, we, we want to look for that. Um, and we may want to look for skills, the same skills and experiences, excuse me a little bit here, 
or skills and experiences that align really well and can form a cohesive group. Um, not a group that always votes the same, a group that can challenge each other in, in healthy <coughs> ways to, to come to good decisions for the best of the city. Um, I love the fact that all candidates spoke to their love of the city of Englewood and that many had involvement in the city already. That's always good to see. Um, in the essence of time, I, I would like to speak to the three that, that ended up in my top scoring um, category. Uh, and then I'll go in alphabetical order again. Um, Scott Danford, I thought um, his collaboration with the Chamber of Commerce and the fact that he's a business owner um, could well support his ability to understand the role of business in Englewood and support many facets of what we decide on and what we have to um, think about here on council. Um, he's been here for a very long time, so an investment in time also brings added knowledge peripherally, but it's still knowledge and experience. Uh, he had a very positive attitude, was very energetic, and I liked, I liked hearing from him. Um, Carson Green, of course, we, we know of his tenure on the Board of Adjustment and Appeals. Um, one citizen did call me and um, uh, speak without going on public record, this person said, speak to a positive experience with Carson Green on um, the Board of Adjustment and Appeals. So I appreciated that. Um, he did previously apply when, when there was another similar opening on council. Um, maybe there is a slight concern that 14 years have passed and that there's an application now and he's applying now and certainly we've had a <laughs> strong mayoral candidate for District 1. Um, but I, I wonder about maybe a non-application or for even at large and to serve the city in between the 14 years. I think he's a tremendous candidate, but I, I, it's a, an outstanding question for me. Just 14 years have passed um, without a run for office in an at-large capacity even. Um, just a question. Um, he did have an impactful story regarding conflict. Um, the conflict was with two people and and mirrored a life-threatening scenario. And I think what we often experience on council is with more than two people and um, in situations where it's not, our lives aren't at risk for the decisions we make here. It's for the benefit of the city, but it's, it's a little bit different scenario. And so I did appreciate council member Olson following up on that question for a different example. However impactful the story, I didn't really know that it aligned all, all together with what we were looking for. And um, I just wanted to, to make that, that statement. Um, strong candidate, very well spoken, obviously um, intelligent and capable. Um, Othaniel Sierra um, seemed to me most aware of the types of tools knowledge, ways of working, of the challenges and the requirements of a city council member of, of all the candidates. I, um, I hope the city attorney won't be waving her thing. I'm heavily involved in CASE, our, the, the Englewood Environmental Group, um, although it's not a board of, or commission. Um, it's an active community group, um, has a technical skill set, while being personable and approachable, which is not always um, something you find in individuals. Um, I appreciated the uh, familiarity with not just the common areas in District 1, but he seemed to know about um, the area, for example, west of Santa Fe around Dartmouth, um, the, the lesser known areas of District 1 because of his involvement in his physical activity, which he talked about a lot, and um, it seemed like naturally he had already explored those areas and was aware of things happening and all around District 1. I felt a, maybe a stronger recognition and an, an understanding of District 1 and what was happening, not just in the, the Broadway business corridor. Um, and I, I will close by saying that I received approximately nine phone calls, texts, um, and emails, maybe one text, mostly 
uh, emails and phone calls in support of Mr. Sierra's candidacy. So I got a lot of custom or citizen feedback, um, all in um, staunch support of, of his candidacy and of his ability to positively serve on the council with us. So, okay, thank you. <coughs> I'll go through the alphabetical list of those that were not in my top <coughs> three, but I <coughs> deserve great uh, mention just because I do think they put themselves out here. Yeah. Mr. Hessling, um, I really love the breadth of his thinking about all kinds of things. For someone that is, hasn't been on a board and commission here, um, probably not known really well by any of us. Um, he's got a heart for a number of things within the city and I really appreciated hearing that. He's got a great thinking strategic mind and cares. Um, um, Ms. Lenz, I think a uh, heart of gold for a very specific population but if you look at her background she's got more than that in terms of her uh, back, her uh, resume. Uh, I do think that she's got a strong sense of what it would take to really listen to people and care about them along the way, I think that would be very strong for her. Um, Ms. Liebert, I thought as a researcher and loves to dig, and she advocacy is a great word to use for her, both her and, and Ms. Lenz. I think they're big advocates for different kinds of people in their lives and important issues for them. Uh, and I'm impressed that she's been here, you know, for a few years and probably is looking at all kinds of things uh, and willing to think about serving in that kind of way when she has challenges um, with what she's dealing with at home too and probably a very busy life as well. Um, Ms. Mannion is um, clearly one of the strongest in terms of an accountant background, that kind of thing. Um, I think she's very clearly interested in the budget and details of the budget and how we go about it. Uh, and she's been on ACE, which is helpful to see that she's been engaged in the city with other other issues and residents and, and businesses. Uh, then the ones that I mentioned for mine in their order, Scott Danion, uh, Dan, Danion. <laughs> what a wedding of names. <laughs> um, you know, there were a number of things about him. I think that, uh, it's been mentioned already, his energy is, is very clear. Uh, the fact that he has this breadth of time in Inglewood with a number of involvements with citizens and the, not just the chamber, which he's been on for a while, but the um, what do you call it? The pirate sports, sports. sports. Um, youth sports, which he didn't, didn't really speak to, but I know he's been very, very engaged there in the schools and understanding what's going on there. So he's a well-respected person from, from his neighborhood and around. I have heard a few people did contact me about him positively. Uh, I think he's very self-motivated and a courageous kind of risk taker. He's not willing, I, he's, he's willing to be challenged on things and, and be questioned on things. I've seen that with him. Uh, and I think he demonstrated an openness for that. Uh, I also thought that he had a very clear idea of some of the issues that we're dealing with in the neighborhoods, both with development and with finances and figuring that out. Um, yeah, ability, I think he'd have a great ability and a, and a concern to connect with people. And he does do that really well, in, in, if you know him. Um, Mr. Green obviously has this background of 14, 14 years or 12, 12 years on him on the Board of Adjustments and Appeals. I think that his sense of fairness and justice probably struck me the most and his patience in trying to get most information. I think that's what BOAA really requires of people and he has a strong track record with those who served on that board with him. He is the one that mentioned that he loves the transparency in the packets that we have and how open that is uh, and has a sense of, uh, I guess that's fairness again and justice involved with that. Team conflict, uh, I, I think, wait a minute, yeah, this is the one with the, the climbing, yeah, the friend. So I, I, that was an incredible story, and I don't fault him for using it because it's got to have had a huge impact. I do want to, when I'm looking at these candidates, I am looking for how do people deal with conflict in a group, and when do they bring things up, when do they take courage and do things that are difficult. I think he pays attention. I think he's a listening and researcher kind of guy. Uh, and I think there's some maturity with him over time that has been shown. And then the last one is Mr. Sierra. And uh, I, I got an overwhelming, I don't know if they were on, on your list too, but I got an overwhelming uh, set of phone calls and 
some emails regarding him in positive ways. I did get a couple that were negative about other candidates, but not worth going into at this point. Uh, I liked that his uh, optimistic looking for win-win is kind of the way he, he works, and it seems like that's what he's done in his business to make things work. Uh, that the story that he told of conflict in the company with the customer that was adversarial, and you know, when people are adversarial, we do tend to, to become adversarial back, but for them to step back and figure out another solution and then have it actually lead to something even better for him was just wonderful. I think that's, that shows a great level of maturity and openness to differences of opinions and changing, changing our views. I love the question you kept asking. When have you changed your view on something? Well, we should have had that as the seventh question. Sees <laughs> uh, role as operational uh, pretty well. He understands it, listening, connecting, following up, setting priorities, how he goes about setting priorities, and he seems to have a personal drive for that. He talked about that in his personal way as well as his, his kind of uh, work that he would do for the city. I think he had some great ideas about revenue uh, and thinking about different options that we might have. and. He also brought up the affordability concern that we have in the city and uh, developments. There's a strong interest in the quality of life here through whether it's environment, whether it's figuring out how our marijuana shops and impact work, our purchasing, uh, a number of things that came together in, in that kind of a more overall concern. So I think those cover all mine. Okay. Thank you, and and I will um, just go in, I think the order that I listed them here, I probably said um, alphabetical order, but I don't think they are. <laughs> <laughs> that makes them random. Not the, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, Carson Green, um, I actually loved his story. Um, about conundrum and and what I took away from that mm -hmm. was his ability to compromise to a certain point but also he had the ability to stand alone um, and you know even end relationships now we can't end relationships with each other for at least two years <laughs> 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 so I guess we have to figure that one out um, I I like the fact um, that he has served on a board and just um, in, in what has already been shared, I did not serve on a board and before I ran for council. Um, and there were a lot of people that kept saying to me, run for a board, and I never felt compelled to do it. I see the strength now or the reason for doing that um, because you have an understanding of the city that you didn't have. Um, and so I, that's one of his strengths, I believe. Um, and um, I mean, everything that everyone has shared, um, we did have a great group of candidates. Um, he, the budget is one of my issues also. Um, he talked about uh, funding issues and uh, requiring a sustainable budget. Um, there were a lot of things uh, that he, he brought up. I believe he is um, a very strong candidate. Um, Scott Danford, um, what everyone has said, he, he does have a lot of positive energy. Um, he... Um, he sees uh, one of our greatest assets are our people, and I think that is good in the fact that um, it is the citizens um, where we get the direction. Um, and then uh, one of the things he talked about was working together to resolve um, metrics for the entire workforce. Um, I think he is very compassionate. I think he cares about the city. Of course, I believe, what I really believe is all seven of these candidates um, do care about the city uh, a great deal. Um, Andrea Mannion, um, 
I like the fact that she has served on a board too. I like the fact that she turned the board around um, and grew it. Um, and one thing that uh, stuck out to me also, uh, when she said that she's been coming to city council meetings for a couple of years, and, and that is true, that um, really hit me. And so, so there was a commitment there um, without even being committed to, to city council. Um, I was very impressed with her, um, her strengths, um, her time management and prioritization and just the goals that she's accomplished um, at a young age, I believe that uh, is a testimony to that. Um, she's not afraid to ask questions. Um, And I really liked her response about to the question um, that was asked about going into debt for a city. And, and her response to that question was because she doesn't want to put a big burden on the back of the taxpayers. And so I appreciated that. Um, and then um, Othniel Sierra, I um, really liked uh, the fact that he is a good listener. and. Um, there um, and the homework that he's, he did uh, in preparing for this, um, looking at the comp plan, um, and just the um, the assets that he listed. I mean, he listed the water rights, and, and that probably is one of our greatest assets. Um, I like the fact that he sets goals. And, um, and works towards um, accomplishing all of that. He sounds like a very busy person, um, but he's organized enough to handle um, everything that goes on. And um, in the interest of time, I'm not gonna go into the other ones, but every single candidate had amazing positive qualities that they brought to this. And, and I do like the fact that Council Member Barentine and Council Member Wink brought up um, the cohesive um, council. Um, I, I have been really impressed with the cohesiveness we're experiencing even right now, and uh, so we're going to be adding another person um, to the mix, and, and so um, I think it would be great to have one that will, you know, help us continue this um, direction towards cohesiveness. Yes. Oh. Um, Member Berentine. I, I hesitated because uh, I went first, but I, I hesitated to even mention about the people that had contacted me. I did make it um, open that I was having a um, coffee on Friday, and then and I made it pretty clear that I expected all of us would hear from our constituents. But I also took to heart what Council Member Olson said, which was, we're supposed to be making this decision. We're not voting on, based on what we hear out there. But since it's been brought up, I would do somewhat of a disservice to the people that have contacted me now that it's been brought up that way. And I think, I mean, we all do different activities, and so we have a different, um, like you're, you're with Case, so you have a you're maybe more involved in certain issues than others, and maybe some people would contact you. And that I did have, I think, an email from somebody on case, and I did have um, a for because they work with. I can't with remember Daniel. Name. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I don't want to butcher Mr. it. Mr. Sierra. I, uh, that, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, <coughs> and I did have um, somebody do a phone call for um, Mr. Um, Scott Danford, but the overwhelming information that I got, I would have only ended up with two people. And it was, uh, it was the overwhelming information where people contacted me, and maybe it's because of the kind of groups that I'm around or whatever, uh, was for Andrea and for uh, Carson Green. And I think because it, they wanted to drive home again to me how important the budget is. and. Um, service aspect of it. I, um, I, 
I was just looking at my notes for Mr. Green and just to clarify that was a question that I had for him because I was on, um, I mean, that's a long time ago. And uh, that was asked of him because it concerned me as well. And when I asked him, he said he intended to run um, when Mr. Jefferson, former Mayor Jefferson got out of there, who expected that he was gonna leave in the middle of his term and then we're kind of putting somebody in, whoever goes into this position will potentially be, will run as an incumbent if they run. And so that kind of does put people who were anticipating on running in 2019 at somewhat of a disadvantage that if they don't get in there, then uh, that, and I thought that was a reasonable answer. I also respected the fact that he said he started something and he wanted to see it through. So, I mean, because that, that was of some issue to me too, that there was a lot of opportunity there. And, um, but if you want to run for that district, then you would be patient and you would wait like several other people apparently are. There are several people that made comments that they would not come to council to be interviewed, but they intend to run in, in 19 because they w wouldn't do this. So I think, uh, I think all of these nine people and then seven people kind of struggled with which way to, which way do you pursue this if you want to go on council, which way is better, um, which way looks better to the people or how, how to do this process. So I, I struggled with that, but he did answer the question and I thought, he, I thought it was pretty straightforward. So I just wanted to chime in so that I give the people who took the time to talk to me a shout out since I didn't think we were gonna be doing that, but since we did, um, I thought I, I thought I, I feel obligated to at least share that as well. It's never a lot. I mean, I deal with a lot of people. I mean, I don't. I mean, how many board <coughs> things have you been on all over the years? I mean, you deal with a lot of people. So, but I was very impressed when I heard from the city manager how many people watched it online. I mean, I, I, that's nice that the technology that we're putting out there and the transparency and that people are taking advantage of it. So there were people that were very informed when they spoke and I um, listened and to the point where actually I changed my mind on some things um, in, in trying to get through all of this and I looked at some things a little differently. So I greatly appreciated the feedback that uh, people took the time, that's why we televised it, that's why it's all public, is so that we could get that input too. So that's all I wanted to share. Thank you, Councilmember Valentine. Um, Councilmember Cuesta. Uh, following in that spirit, I received uh, responses from citizens in support of Mr. Sierra, as well as Mrs. Mannion. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Martinez. I think I mentioned it briefly, but I also received um, citizen input, uh, all in favor of Othoniel Sierra, some were in District 1 and some also outside of District 1. Okay, thank you. Oh, and I have another question too with that. Um, how many people, I didn't hear you say how many people watched those videos. Do we know how many people did? Or roughly? Um, we, uh, we do have backroom statistics about who's, who watches these, these specific meetings that we mm -hmm. have and it was, not whom, but how many people? <laughs> I know, I was going to ask that. You scared them. They're all shutting off right now. Oh, yes. oh, no. A number Scott of Gilbert people. Gilbert was in the down. <laughs> uh, actually, it was 70 was the first, the first night. So that's, oh, wow. that's very positive. That is a lot. Yeah. That's great. It is. But we cannot identify them by names. Sorry. Thank you. We, we cannot identify people by names. We can just see the number. <laughs> so our, your Nielsen ratings went up on this past week. <laughs> We're thank trending. You. Call Mark Keck rating. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, I, and actually, I would like to disclose also, I had a coffee early on before we were through with all of the um, interviews, and I did get some feedback at that point, um, some of it um, being more general about what to look for. And I mean, a lot of people suggested that uh, people that have more tenure, longer tenure in the city, um, um, and, and I did get uh, feedback um, from a couple of places, um, just for your information, that um, 
women are from Venus and men are from Mars. <laughs> and so that um, perhaps um, we need another gentleman on um, city council. <laughs> so, um, and I, I did get a couple of emails. Um, I also s went to the Simon Center for Coffee on Saturday morning and actually they were very interested in um, who was applying and actually they asked me uh, once we have the new council member appointed um, would I bring them over because the council member for district one will be their representative so um, I I have had input and um, so in support of all of the different people and um, I mean, not overwhelming, just a few people here and there. And, and I do agree that uh, we do, we, we need to take citizen input, um, but this is a special situation. Ideally, the citizens of this city, or citizens of District 1, would elect this person, but because of the way this happened, um, it is appointed. And so... Um, I think we also have a responsibility to be wise in what we do. We need to take in the feedback and then um, the buck stops right here. So, and I mean, perhaps if, uh, if it ended up being a tie for some reason, it would go to a special election and then the citizens would, would elect um, the person. But if they ran. If they, well, yeah, exactly. So, Councilmember Olson. Yeah, I wanted to make just a couple comments. First of all, men are not from Mars and women are not from Venus. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think so? No, and, and actually the research, that, that there is no research behind that book, and it's an unfortunate book that was written that has created all kinds of havoc for men and women today. So I just want to say I that. think that, that saying was around before that book was ever oh, written. Oh, yes, it's true. it's true. But then the book came out and people thought, oh, that makes uh -huh. it true. It's like, no, if you go back, it's pretty, 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 pretty sexist. But anyway, uh, that said, I also, <laughs> my top three were men. So um, here we are. I, I did want to say that there were a couple of situations where I could have been with one of the candidates and chose not to be there. So because of my assignments, on, and I just wanted you to know that as well. I was not around this weekend, but I did receive a lot of phone calls. Uh, and so that's where people <coughs> got a hold of me or sent me emails. So, Thank you. <laughs> I <laughs> actually ran into somebody who made the comment that they considered running and didn't want to be part of the hen house. So I think if with all of our, because um, I've been a woman all my life, and I don't have anything against women, but I, I want to not ignore the, um, the perception that it gives either. And so um, I was kind of surprised that you said that, that somebody said that to you. You didn't say that. Somebody said it to you. But that that sentiment was kind of out there because then I also had somebody who like, oh, maybe someday we'll have an all... And I go, I don't, I, I don't necessarily think that way. Like, I don't... I want to have the most qualified people. I, I feel you on that one. But I do, I do understand that there is a difference in thinking. Maybe. I don't know, you're the only guy right now. So. <laughs> but um, it was kind of weird to me that all of a sudden some comments were being made like that, that it was, it was just odd, both positive and negative. So I just, I, I just want to make sure that uh, we're aware of it. I mean, I don't, take it, I don't take those things lightly when somebody just off the cuff said, I, I thought about running, but I'm not, and it was a woman. And I was, um, I was just kind of surprised. So I, I think it's well, it's well taken that there are some differences in the way that um, we perceive things and that we talk about them. I don't think it disqualifies or makes somebody else more qualified. But I was just taken aback a little that some comments like that came my way too. And I don't generally, I don't walk around thinking I'm, I'm a representative from PV emails. I kind of, you know, don't look at things that way. That's not the way that I was raised was to look at people's, uh, you know, abilities. It just doesn't occur to me sometimes. So it did take me a little bit back when the comment got made, so. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, Council Member Cuesta. You bet. Um, I also had it pointed out to me that I'm the only. <laughs> you didn't know that before. However, <laughs> it was my five-year-old daughter, and she thinks it's very funny. Very funny. But, um, At five, you know, she. Oh. Well, right. she was there for the swearing in, and yes, she noticed that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm right. we can't. We can't ignore that. Thank you. Yeah, I just put up. So um, I, I, I think it's a great conversation to have, and I don't discount d gender as being a piece in which people are concerned about, because if this were uh, uh, five men sitting here and only woman on, one woman on, probably people would be saying the opposite, too. Like right. we need another exactly. woman on there. So that's I'm just trying right. to combat. I do think we have some very sexist ways that we view life in the world and decision-making. You could say we're having a very fine conversation because we have five women <laughs> finally but I don't even want to do that I just want to say that I think that we have to be really careful about those kinds of things um, but I appreciate the conversation because I do think that our citizens see things certain ways and they do have I mean I've heard the same thing I heard that uh, about certain people hen house hens whatever and uh I think we just have to know that people say things about the way we have operated in the last year and the tensions that we've had and the difficulties. So they're wanting to see us find a way to find a team player that is not about first trying to get somebody or trying to figure out, you know, and always negative and always um, pointing things out that are mistakes or whatever. That's what I'm, I'm looking for, someone who's actually looking for the breadth of everything and finding out all the facts of it before we go into it before we make final decisions. So that's that's where I that's where I'm coming from. So I'm looking for strategic thinkers and learners. So all right. Thank you. Okay, any um, anything else we want to bring up before just that my students are gonna be so <laughs> I've been watching. We could have had class. No. <laughs> They're very thankful to you. <laughs> we left early. Then I will drag this out a bit longer. Uh, if that's the case. Uh, Mr. Kike, you did allude to the cost of a special election. Uh, you did not get into the time frame. Do you mind sharing that with us or whatever parameters you know of uh, how that would unfold if it were to go to special election? Yes, thank you. I know I've actually had the city clerk reach out to Arapahoe County. They are, they are the organization that helps us run the election. Actually, they, they run the election for us on our behalf. <coughs> for this year, this fiscal year, we budgeted $30,000 for elections, but that's for the general election, the midterm election that will occur later this November. Ballpark figures for a special election. And again, we're waiting actually on the figures back from them, but it's around $15,000. The time frame, um, again, talking with the city clerk, she's looked at what it would take because you, if, if in fact the decision could not be reached or attained by this council, it would push it to a special election as everybody's talked about. That particular time frame, if you do the math, because people have to go out and they have to petition, turn the petitions in, the cure period, um, as well as working with the county to set an election, you're looking at early May would be the earliest in which an election could be, could be um, had. Then from there, obviously, if, that's, if it's not close and there's no recalls and those types of things, then obviously you could be appointing somebody in, in, in mid-May. But that's the time frame you're looking at. So ballpark figure, 15,000. May earliest you'd be able to have a special election. And I'd be coming and asking for a, a supplemental appropriation if you did that to help <laughs> cover those costs. Understood. Thank you. Council Member Wilson. Are, are there any kind of... I mean, this to the city attorney, any particular concerns about the process at all after, if it were to go to a special election, any things that we should be aware of? I don't, I mean. Not that I'm aware okay. of. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Yes. Council Member Martinez. Uh, I'm really hoping we can work through this together and find uh, someone that's gonna work with us. Um, but just in case we don't, um, I guess at what point do we decide that's the right move? Is it just if we vote once and we tie? Do we try it several times? Like, what, what would that look like? Yes. You have 30 days from the date the position opened. So um, until the 30 days expires, the question remains on the, on the table until you answer it. If at the end of 30 days you haven't answered it at that point, we would begin the election process. But 
uh, it just, again, it just remains an open question. And the 30 days would be February 8th, was that it? February 9th? I haven't I counted I thought it started it. January 8th? January 9th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not the date. I guess he, they give him credit for serving on the 8th. Correct. Got it. So it still could be February 8th, right? <coughs> There's 31 days in Correct. January. Correct. Great, thank you. Council Member Berenstein. Um, gosh, no, I forgot my question. If we, um, if we were to have a vote tonight and tie for some reason, I mean, just to go on your hypothetical stuff here, um, then we can keep the question open until it just, we can come back and absolutely you can bring it up at at any regularly scheduled meeting or you can schedule a special, special meeting meetings. as many special meetings as you want there is no limitation on the amount of times you bring this up it's the only limitation is after 30 days it would go to a special election and the only requirement for a special meeting would be 24 hour notice 48 because yes. you like 48 hours we tend to get complaints if we don't give the 48, but technically it's Legally 24. It's, okay. Yeah. yeah. Fine. All right. Thank you. So we should have some idea tonight what's going to happen um, after we have the discussion on the dais. And then we have one more council meeting. Um, we can see how close it is before. Um, whether we need to call a special meeting. Councilmember Wilson. Can we continue tonight to try and whittle? You know, not whittle. Well, where'd that come from? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, sorted. Let's have a sorting hat. We're at Hogwarts. No. Uh, what, uh, is there a way to, you know, so let's say we have a tie vote, tie vote, say, okay, can we agree to a few others in this list and then do it again? Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So we can keep doing it until we can get somewhere on okay. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Berntheim. I mean, part of the reason that we agreed to this to try and make sure that we were doing this is to make sure that we were not trying to rush a decision either. If we end up with the tie, I would like for us to have, uh, go back to what we had agreed on and that's that at, at nine or some reasonable time that this council is um, questioned on whether they want to continue. I do not think that it has been for the last two years in the best interest of this council to go ahead and have meetings go on forever, not for the public and not for this council. And um, I have no intention of, of trying, if for some reason there is some difficulty in coming up with this decision, then I would prefer to give some time to it rather than make it as if this is a marathon thing tonight to, to do it at all costs tonight when we don't have to, that maybe cooler heads will prevail and we need to do some thinking if that's a situation that arises. And I would prefer that we come to an agreement rather than panic on the dais that we've got to do this tonight if that's the situation. We've all been aware that with six council members, it's a possibility. So um, I want to set some time limit or standard or something so that we're not um, having this go on forever. Um, and if, if something like that happens, that we make an agreement that we can either wait until the next meeting or that we call a special meeting and give ourselves some time, all of us to think about what's said and what's brought forward so that we can consider it. Okay, uh, were you suggesting that we did go late tonight? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's uh, no. And I do want to remind us that our very first meeting together as a group, we did go till midnight. So I do not want that again. Uh, oh, of course. And, and so and, what I would prefer to do is, if we have enough time and we can think, of, could, could we get another round of voting tonight? If we can't, then you know, let's stay with our you know <coughs> regular meetings. We've tried to be done by nine thirty, nine forty-five, right? So let's try and stay with I think that. So. If that we was can't, I'm day. fine with doing a special meeting, um, and and adding one in this week, uh, next week if we need to, I'm fine with doing that. Yeah, okay. no, I don't want to go late. All right, thank you. And I didn't, I, I didn't think I heard you say that. Um, 
That was under different leadership at midnight. So far, we haven't had that. Well, we did have one long one. Uh, until 1 a.m. Not until 1 o'clock in the morning. It was midnight. Yeah, two weeks ago. It was. Oh. No. <laughs> Not like you had, so. I'm not sure I didn't get home till that. one o'clock. Yeah, I left here. <laughs> I don't know. Did you go home early? You were not in charge of the meeting. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's <laughs> um, okay. I, and I have had requests from other council members that we don't go that late. We had a regular in. meeting with right. six of us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So nine o'clock, uh, we will revisit what's left on the agenda, and we'll. I mean, if I believe if we can get done by 9.45 or 10 o'clock at the latest. I do not want to go, I really don't want to go to 10 o'clock, but I think that if we could get everything done, we would, so. If that's okay, we will talk about it at nine o'clock if that happens. Any other comments? We will adjourn this meeting and we will meet next door in a half an hour, seven o'clock. Thank you very much.